also came that he might bring many sons unto glory. Uh, listen to Paul writing in Hebrews chapter 2. For it became him in bringing many sons yeah. unto glory to make the captain of our salvation perfect. So here's the simplicity of what God is doing. God desires to have a model family. But he's got to have a model son who teaches all his children how to behave, how to act, how to live, how to honor, how to obey, how to submit, how to humble ourselves, and how to please God in everything that we do. So it is by the spirit of adoption that we have received that we cry, Abba, Father. Paul makes it clear here in Acts chapter 17 that we are his offspring. We are God's children. Yes. And he also makes it plain in Ephesians that all the families of heaven and earth yes. are named after God because John says, Beloved, now, now are we the sons of God. Not when we get to heaven. Oh, praise God. Not when Jesus comes back. But, beloved, now. In fact, let me back up to, to 1 John 3 and 1. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called in his gospel Chapter 1 and 10, he says, he has given them power to become the sons of God. And in his epistle now, he's saying, he has given us the ability to be called. It's not enough simply to be called a son of God. We need to become the sons of God. And so today I want to reach out to those of you who might be sitting here and you have a reputation that you are called the sons of God. I want to show you a way to become the sons of God. Oh, praise God. Oh, praise God. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Oh, praise God. So what are God's family traits? We must have our father's features. Oh, praise God. The father's DNA must be in us. The father's blood must run through our veins. We must have the father's name written upon our foreheads. Let me be clear so there is no ambiguity. There are days when I visit my mother now and from a certain angle wearing a certain cap she says oh my God I see your daddy. And even my wife sometimes sees me from a certain angle and says, I can see my father-in-law. Because the older I get, the more I'm getting to look like my late father. Yeah. What is your point, preacher? Come on. My father's genes are in me. Yes. My father's blood runs through me. Yes. And not only me, but my brothers look like my father. And so we... It's not a physical relationship. It's a spiritual relationship. We must have our father's features because we are God's children and he is our father. Since Jesus is the express image of God, we must look like Jesus. We must sound like Jesus. We must walk like Jesus. We must talk. Jesus, we must love like Jesus, we must behave like Jesus. Oh, 
That we are sons of God. Sons and daughters of God. Listen to John. First John chapter 2, 6 or 7 roundabout. He that said he abideth in him ought also so to walk even as he walked. Let me say that again. He that saith he abideth in him ought also so to walk even as he walked. I've got to walk like Jesus. I've got to behave like Jesus. I've got to act like Jesus. I've got to look like Jesus. Yes. For I am the Son of God. I'm going to bring this to a conclusion. But these spiritual characteristics, they are the hallmarks of God's family upon the lives of his children. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the pillar and ground of the truth. And it is indeed the place where sons are being made here. Yes. Remember about 30 years ago, Bishop Evans preached a message in Canada, sons are being made here. Sons and daughters are being made here. When you come into the church, God is making sons and daughters. Because yeah. that's what the church is for. We are his workmanship yeah. created in Christ Jesus. Amen. God is working on us. Yes. And he's not finished with us yet. I was saying to the men in the men's council, we go to anniversary services we hear of all the years that men have served and all the wonderful things they've done and we have never heard about any of their failures. But I'm going to a lot of funerals these days and when I read the obituary, when I read the eulogy, there are surprises popping out. Uh, there, there, there are there are things coming up from the past that you've never heard about. So somebody told you about all the 40 years they served and never told you about their failures. But I want somebody in the house to know today, if you have failed, you don't have to remain a failure. Amen. Oh, praise God. Oh, praise God. Oh, praise God. I don't want you to take this the wrong way I'm concluding. No. I would never advocate to a sanctified, holy, born again believer that you go and try out sin. Not at all. You would be a fool to do that. Yes, yes sir. Make it straight. But John says, if we sin, My God. I'm an advocate. if any man sin, if we have fallen into sin, Hallelujah. oh praise God, Jesus. there is an advocate, Jesus Christ the righteous, Amen. oh praise God. Amen. If we say that we have not sinned, we make God a liar. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So the prophet Hosea says, do not rejoice over me, O mine enemy. Though I fall, I will rise again. And I want to leave the door open as I close this message today for somebody. You have fallen by the wayside. You have dropped out of the line. You have gone back from your steadfastness. You have lost and then that family contact, you've lost that identity which you once had with Christ. You, you, you dropped out because the circumstances might have overcome you. Yes. But God has devised a plan yes. to bring about this new family with Jesus Christ as his model. 
and the heir of God. Uh, Paul tells us that we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus. So when I sang, I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I'm a joint heir with Jesus. And as we travel along, oh, praise be to God. God, who is the greatest father, his hands are outstretched today. The family is a support system. The family must have a support network. Oh, praise God. I've got some brothers who are not abiding in the truth because I'm one of six brothers. And a couple of my brothers are outside the church at the moment, but they are still my brothers. I still pray for them. I still intercede for them because I want them to come back and to have uh, all that I'm enjoying yeah. in the privileges uh, that are to be found only in God's house. Uh, let me just make it plain. If you are like that prodigal, My God. oh praise God, who have asked for your substance, uh, you have asked for your inheritance, uh, you have asked for your legacy, yeah. and you have gone out and you have squandered it, uh, I want to let some prodigals know yeah. today that you can come home. Yeah. Prodigals ought to know yeah. your father stands there and he's looking out. He's waiting for you. You now need to do your part. But God is waiting for you. He's yeah. sitting there and he's looking out. But you need to do what only you can do. Yeah. You need to say, I will arrive. Oh, praise God. God spoke to me some time ago. Give me a word. Do the prodigals know that they can't come home? Do they know that there's an open arm? Do they know that there's a father who sits?